feels like, in a lot of ways, you're playing a very different character, or at least a different side that we didn't see, you know, six months ago. Totally. And now he's playing a much darker side. And you're doing a great job, by the way. Yeah. Thank great you. Great job. So good. Thank Phenomenal. you. Phenomenal. But, but talk, talk about that and just shifting. You sleep there. But, like, just shifting to this darker side. And, of course, he's he loves her, but it's also there's a lot of stuff going on in his head. Yeah, well, you know, um, what we just talked about earlier as well is Ben had all the the backstory and like the genetic makeup and the and the life experience of what easily could end up as a, a serial killer or a split personality or however you want to call it and uh, you know even though he had those things he had finally found a place in his life and, and in his world where he finally found a home and a, and a true love and, and a family per se and a, and a family environment that he's never experienced before and um, you know, it, it was it was threatened, and it was threatened in a way where he tried to bottle it up and bottle it up, and we all are, are uh, you know, guilty of doing that in one way or another in shape or form of life, and sooner or later there's a breaking point. Not everybody breaks the same way Ben Weston breaks, but uh, because of his background and his ex life experience, when they presented this to me, um, it only made sense, and I just, it opened up my eyes to him, and I, you know, I fell in love with Ben, and I'm very protective of him now, and I, you know, me too. it's great. Right? <laughs> I, say, I, I think it's so wonderful that the fans are responding so well to the story. It's really um, so great to see. But Rob has done an outstanding level of work, and I think he himself has seen, has every time he surprises himself, and it's just going to continue that way. Like the story is so great because he was so committed, and I was so committed, and we didn't judge the story, we didn't judge the character, and we kept coming back to the same thing every time. Like. As you know, individuals and playing our character, and as the story, like discussing, like what, let's be as truthful as we possibly can, as exposing, as raw as we possibly can. What would happen? I mean, we did a ton of research with this, and you know, you can look at it two ways like, oh, it's not relatable, I'm not like them, or whatever, or like Rob just said, you know, find the thread of what makes them snap, that and then the commonality good. of like, where does that live for me? And so with um, with Abigail, you know, you look at her history, she's come from one failed relationship after another. She was a virgin until she was 20-something years old. She doesn't have any girlfriends. She lives at home with her mother and has a very um, uh, codependent relationship with her family. And all of those things, you know, lost her father. Before that, felt like she was always abandoned. All of those things culminated into her feeling like, and being a mockery in the town too, you know? She just wanted love and wanted it to work out once. And I think that this is the first relationship she had after her father died. And her father was such an important presence in her life that that was another big element mm -hmm. for me was like, I just wanted to do my dad proud. I wanted to get married to this man who treats me well. And on paper, Ben was great, you know? And he came in and he accepted me for EJ and all this stuff. And little things started to happen. And as I'm totally guilty of it too, I can't speak for anyone but myself, but it's human nature. Oh, I'm not going to think about that. Oh, no, I did notice that thing. That was a red flag, but, like, it's nothing. And you just keep going, and that's how every woman gets themselves into that position where you go, holy crap, where did, how did I get here?